Greetings and thank you for that introduction. I, like um, all of those that spoke from before me, am delighted to be in the company of these other great and accomplished women that are on the panel presenting today. As introduced, I am Dia Wen. I want to share with you a story of a little girl who was born in Harlem and grew up in a single parent, poverty stricken home or apartment in the South Bronx in New York. She spent her education early in the public school system. This girl was taught to value and take seriously her education. And by the third grade, her diligence in her studies was rewarded. She received a computer for having high academic achievement in her school. She was fascinated by this technology and it opened up a world for her unlike any she had been exposed to or frankly was aware of. None of the fairy tales she watched had women with jobs. None of the books she read told stories of women working in computers or science. It wasn't reflected in any of her school studies either. The prevailing thought and pictures from media portrayed certain roles for women as homemakers, teachers, or maybe a nurse. And it wasn't something she saw in the women around her. You can imagine, even though she was in new, exciting, and an intriguing territory, it was foreign and frightening. Perhaps she was too young to know this. So with all the intellect and curiosity she had, she made a decision at eight that set her on a course to study and pursue a career in computers. Technology changed her life. That girl is me. I share that story because it speaks to the very heart and intent of the Bayesian Declaration, our goal for gender equality and women empowered. It's not about me. My story is not uncommon. You only rise to the level that you're exposed. I come from meager beginnings, but it was exposure to technology at an early age and education that changed the trajectory of my life. You've heard already from some of those on the panel that stressed this as well. Two ingredients are important, exposure and education. I consider exposure or access to education and technology as critical in us being able to see gender equality. However, I would be giving an incomplete picture if I failed to mention how our dream and our work towards gender equality is undermined because of systems, policies, social cultural norms, and patriarchal structures that have supported mindsets of gender inequality for decades, or dare I say, for hundreds of years. My journey has been one met with opposition and struggle, not just because of being a woman, rather coupled with the scourge of being black, an African-American woman in America. In order to see the promise of the Bayesian Declaration and UN Sustainable Development Goals, we must be determined to address systemic and institutional barriers that perpetuate discrimination against and keep all of us from being equal. And that cannot be done by women or people from marginalized communities alone. It requires the active work and partnership of men and the majority. Now, when I reflect on the Bayesian Declaration and the Platform for Action from 1995, this document reflecting 189 countries signifying their commitment to achieving equality, development and peace for women and girls worldwide, I was nearing the end of my undergraduate studies in computer science at Spelman College and the parent company where I now work was just one year old. The unmanned Galileo spacecraft arrived at planet Jupiter. Ebola was ravaging the Congo and Central Africa. NATO bombing led to the peace agreement after thousands of Muslims and were killed and women raped. The US troops pulled out of Somalia where women were disproportionately affected by war, raped and mutilation. At least 60 million girls worldwide were without access to primary school educations. More than two thirds of the world's illiterate adults were women. And while 58% of the world population was women, only 46% were 
over 16 actually had jobs. That was 1995. These, among other, among other events and statistics, all reflect severe impediments to the advancement of women and to development. That's what made the declaration so monumental. Since then, we've seen slow progress in areas of women's equality globally, but there have been rapid advances in technology that can benefit the cause. Broadband makes higher speed internet access available in homes. Flash was introduced for wrench content delivery on the web. Google was founded, transforming how we attain uh, uh, data. Social networking gives rise to a new paradigm for connecting, interacting, and influencing. Cloud computing provides internet access based, uh, 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 internet access to democratize IT resources. Artificial intelligence and big data emerge driving change and how we live and work. And quantum computing promises unparalleled processing power to solve previously unapproachable problems. If we think about it, in its simplest form, society as a whole has benefited from methods and systems and devices improved or invented that use knowledge to solve problems. That's technology. These specific technological advancements I mentioned provide jobs and upward mobility, create income, stability, and opportunities to build up, inherit, and share in wealth. So technology is providing us with tools to tackle gender inequality and empower women. Digital platforms, social media, medical, and emerging technologies have opened up avenues for engagement in cultures where women's physical mobility is restricted and their voices are being silenced where online activism and community building is increasing the awareness and engagement around women's health and rights issues. Career opportunities and learning is made available online and in apps and on mobile devices. Women are setting up businesses and earn income connected to wider global sources for financing, marketing, and funding. Femtech introduces technical solutions that address female health needs exclusively including diagnostic tools, software, mobile apps, and wearables. Women are participating in political campaigns and can have greater access to knowledge and general information. This is technology used for good. And the re results is seen in women empowered in areas like Afghanistan, where women use Twitter to engage with a US congressional healing, hearing on women's inclusion in peace and security. In East Africa and the Philippines, where spin of block bonds uh, application is allowing secure money transfer and financial access to women in rural areas. An Israeli company, Mobile ODT, offers cervical cancer screening, leveraging an AI based smartphone app. And in India, Egypt, Lebanon, and other countries, Harass Map is an online platform using reporting and mapping to tackle sexual harassment in education. Even with these advancements, there is so much yet to be done. According to the World Economic Forum, their global gender gap report that benchmarks 150 countries on their progress towards gender parity across four different dimensions indicated that it will take approximately 100 years for us to see gender equality globally. This is because outside of the US, women on average are 26% less likely than men to have a smartphone. Men hold 75% of parliamentary seats worldwide and 73% of managerial positions. Women's are, women are paid 16% less than men on average and in certain regions that rises all the way up to 35% or more. 50 to 78% of women experience gender discrimination on their jobs. And nearly one in five women have faced domestic violence in the last year. Raya Bhikshari said, when half of the human population is denied their full potential, the world as a whole is at an enormous disadvantage. This is where the work remains. True women's empowerment is for women to be full players in every area of society with freedom to create, earn, own, and build. That means being able to take advantage, full advantage of the benefits of technology and have a seat at the table. In the words of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, women belong in all places decisions are being made. Women have to be in boardrooms and in government. 
Women have to be employed and be entrepreneurs. Women have to be have access to health care and own the decisions for their bodies. Women have to be educated and be able to pave the way for those that will follow. Women have to be included in history and make history. Women have to be have to see themselves in positions in society and be seen in, by society. To see more women empowered, women need exposure, education, and a real commitment to change. That means our collective willingness and courage to put down policies and systems of oppression and create opportunity. In the words of my CEO of AWS, Andy Jassy, we need missionaries, not mercenaries. People willing to do the work to make women equal and empowered. Thank you.